So my name is David Vacas Madrid. I'm Digital Documentation Officer in Historico Scotland. I'm, I'm in representation of the Digital Documentation and Innovation Team. Uh, these are some of my colleagues that have worked in this project. Sophia, Adam, Al, and Reed, that was the conservator that has been working in the conservation of the honors and helped us with the capture of the objects. Um, just yes, like a context, Historic Environment Scotland is the lead public body that cares and promotes historic, historic uh, environment. Uh, and we care for 336 properties and over 41,000 objects. And grand part of the, an important part of the work that my team does, the digital documentation team, is the documentation of all these properties and objects in care. That is a lot of work. Uh, just like an example, like this uh, presentation is uh, focused in the collection parts, in the object part. Uh, I wanted to show you some of the objects that we have, the last object that we have documented. And we um, do the same work, the same effort, um, uh, the same techniques in these objects, like for example, this horseshoe, that the ones that we have done with the crown of the Scotland or the rest of the owners. So we do the same techniques and we put the same time in the objects. But the topic of the presentation, that is the owners of the Scotland, uh, they are very uh, important objects. They have a big significance because they are one of the oldest crowns jewels in Britain and among the oldest in Europe. And they have been uh, present in ceremonial events over the past five centuries and also in the present. Uh, Prior to the coronation of Charles III, uh, we, these objects were going to be used, so they need to be conservated. And different teams on Historic Environment in Scotland, um, we did different interventions in the objects. In our case, we did the documentation of the three objects, the crown, the scepter, and the sword. Uh, the technique that we choose for the, photo, uh, the documentation after trying different things, we decided to go with photogrammetry. We did six uh, captures, two for the crown, one with the bonnet and one without the bonnet, uh, two for the scepter and two for the sword, for capturing the both sides of both objects and combining the objects later. And we took hundreds of photos of the three objects. Uh, we use different uh, strategies to the different objects. For the crown, we use just a turntable technique. We um, put the camera in a fixed position in a tripod and just taking multiple photos around the object in a turntable. Uh, with, with the sword and with the scepter, we took a lot of photos around the objects, working around the objects. Uh, and in the third cases, we use uh, a lot of targets, uh, not just for scaling the objects later, also for uh, helping with the um, alignment of the objects. Uh, we use uh, precision uh, scales and color calibration scales. But the reason because we wanted to talk about these objects also about, they are very significant objects, but it's not just that. Uh, I think the, the interesting part with this is the challenges that these objects present when you document uh, when you try to capture this in 3D. It's the same with photogrammetry or any other 3D technique. They have some challenges that are common for the three objects that we wanted to show you how we try to work around these limitations that the technique has. So the first one and more important that we found in the three objects was the high reflectivity of the surface. The three objects were very, very shiny. <laughs> so, if you don't have done or try to do 3D in shiny objects, you're going to find that you're going to get a very noisy surface. So you're going to lose the shape of the object. You're going to lose the accurate on, on the surface. That in the best of the cases. In the worst case, you're not going to be able to align the photos at all. This is because photogrammetry, how, how it works, is just look for filters that are the same between the different photos and try to put this information together. Uh, the problem when you have a uh, reflectivity in the surface, a uh, shiny surfaces, is the, sur the, the image is changing between the different images. So the software is not able to find the same features. And you're going to find, you know, just an ugly mess or 
you're going to just don't have a 3D at all because the images are not going to, the software is not going to be able to put the images together. So what we use for try to avoid this is using the technique, a technique that is called cross polarization that consists in polarize the lens of the camera and also the source of the lighting. In our case, we use a ring flash. So at the moment that you polarize both the camera and the light, and you need to put that in and in an angle between the two, you remove the reflection from the surfaces. You can see here in the image how in the first image it's just the image with an, any kind of polarization. And in the second image, the image, uh, the, the, the image has been polarized and we have removed the sign and the reflections in the object. Uh, this is not a perfect technique. For example, one of the downsides of this is the color representation using flash and um, polarization is not going to be great. Uh, we do color management and we do analysis on the colors once uh, in the charts, uh, once we have finished the, the processing and the colors are not uh, very accurate, but it's what we needed to do for just capture the surface in this case. Uh, this is the raw result, the, the, um, the output that we get with only kind of edition. Uh, the result was very good. Uh, it has a little of noise, but nothing very important and could be removed. Uh, it has a little issues. You can see it has some examples in the bonnet, has some issues of the geometry in the borders of the bonnet when the software couldn't interpret it, some of the reflections that we're still having in the in the object because the problem was we were in a room where other people were working so not all the lights in the room were polarized uh, but even so the issues are very small and were very easy to fix without having to you know create any fakes in the geometry uh, this is the final output uh, you can see part of the geometry and the part with the texture a uh, second challenge that we have to is, um, try to figure out how to capture, it was translucent surfaces. Transparent and translucent is usually impossible to do in photometry or any kind of 3D recording. So we were expecting in this case, for example, uh, with the jewels and the pairs in the crown, or in this case in the scepter, the, this crystal globe we were expecting that we need to reconstruct this in the post-processing stage because it's going to be impossible to capture. The reason is the same that before, but more extreme. The images are changing too much between the different photos, so the software is not able to figure out that this is the same surfaces. Uh, however, uh, thanks to the flash, we weren't expecting that. This was like an accident, a happy accident. Uh, the flash filled the, the globe and the feeling of light, you can see, oop, you can see here, like you can see part of the uh, crystal very white. It allows to the software recognize enough of the surface for having like a partial mess. That uh, it allows us to do what we were expecting, that it was just reconstruct the, the crystal, but in a more accurate way, because we have some reference in some of the area of the objects that allow us to do like a more accurate reconstruction. Uh, once we have the reconstruction, uh, in that case was done with Blender, uh, we combine both messes and just project the texture back. And in this case, in this visualization, we apply also different materials so that way we can recover the crystal, the transparent, translucent look of the, of the globe. And the last uh, more difficult challenge that we found is in the sword. We didn't expect that the blade and the walls of the sword were going to be a little flexible. So when we move the sword between one position and the next one, uh, the sword moves slightly. So we have very, two very good captures of the both sides. But the problem is when we combine both in reality captures, the, software, or the photometric software that we use in this case, this is what we get. Uh, and this is happening because the movement that it was not very big it was like less of three millimeters but it was greater than the thickness of the object so when that happens this is the result that you're going to have, have. so what was the solution a manual alignment we extract the both sides of the sword and in this case also in blender 
we combine both. We use one like our main mess and we move the other one to position. The good thing is like we, we were expecting that we we're going to have issues in the alignment because the blade is very thin. We took also photos. We elevated a little at the shore. We, we were taking the photos and we took photos below. So we have some reference on how the shore was in the down part. So we could align both sides. Uh, once both sides has been aligned, we again combine the meshes and we import back the, the mesh to Reality Capture. The thing that is telling us that we haven't faked the mesh is that when we project back the textures, the textures are sharp. If we are moving, uh, because the software is, calcula is calculating where the camera positions are. So if you move the mess too much, you're going to find like a blurry texture or just no texture at all. But in this case, both sides were very sharp. So that means that the position were inside of the error parameters of the software. So this is the final model. OK. And once we have figured out how to process these objects, uh, what are the outputs that we are getting? So we always generate a raw model, a model without any kind of additions for archiving, because like you have seen, I have done a few manual editions. So if someone wants to see what is the original mess without any edition, you, you have it there. Uh, we have the edited version. Uh, that is the source of other outputs that we are creating. For example, a 3D printed version that can be used for different stuff like we have seen in other conference today. Uh, and the web version that is just a decimated and optimized version that can be used for web visualization, for virtual reality, like we have seen in other presentations also today. Um, we pulled the three models, in this case in SketchUp, that's a platform for 3D objects. Uh, these are the low poly objects and just can be checked publicly. We did also a lot of renders of animations that have been very useful for press releases, for disseminations, for the interpretation team, so they can have something to show when the objects are not in display. Um, here we have, come on. Uh, an animation of the objects with the textures and the materials applied. But the thing that has been more useful for other teams in the organization has been precisely not the 3D, if not 2D that we have extracted from the 3D. Because it happens a lot that the people that are working in the objects or in the field, they don't have computers at hand that they can use for move 3D models, or they don't have the knowledge or the software to to use a 3D model because, of course, in all these outputs that I have shown you, you can take measurements of the models that are scaled in a very precise way, in a very accurate way. But what the people find more useful is these ortho views that are just renders without perspective. You have a scale reference, so you can take measurements in the image, and you have the different views with of any kind of perspective with different illuminations that allows to the, for example, the conservation team uh, do like an alteration map of the treatments that they are doing in the object. And it allows also to create different views that maybe are not so easy to see in the real object or in the 3D. So in this case, we have like an unwrap of the full crown that it allows you to see the full crown inside and, ex uh, and inside in one view. Or this one that is very interesting, that is just the sword but with the, uh, the words removed, because it has some decoration. It's difficult to see in the screen, but has some decoration here, some signs uh, that they are very difficult to see. I couldn't see it when we were taking the photos. But in the 3D model, we capture everything. Thanks to the flash, we can capture the interior of the um, inside of the word. And we can just remove that part of the geometry and extract these images. And this is all. Ha, 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 ha.